I'm looking forward to trying out this new vise. It's called a Moxon vise with the use of a couple of bolts, nuts, and washers, as well as these cool handles. It's a very easy build and gives you a huge amount of clamping pressure for holding materials in place that you're working on. I have never had one, nor have I ever used one. I bought the hardware online for about $40 and had scrap material left over from building a couple of barn doors recently. So let me hit the highlights of this build. I start with cutting a piece of inch and three quarter poplar hardwood into a couple of four inch wide pieces. That's the recommended width for this vise. I followed the size recommendations for the vise as well, which was 30 inches overall and 24 inches long for the front jaw of the vise. That leaves a three inch overhang on each end, which I'll explain the reason for later. I need to lay out the holes for the bolts and I want them to be precisely duplicated on each of the two pieces. I draw a line down the center of both pieces of material just to give me a reference so that if I accidentally move a piece out of position, I can easily line them back up uh, where they're supposed to be. The first hole I drill is a one inch hole with a Forstner bit. And the purpose of it is to allow me to recess one nut on each bolt into the inside of the rear jaw. I need to enlarge those holes to allow the shoulders of the nut to slip into the hole. After that, I switch to a three quarter inch bit and will drill the remainder of the holes on the project with it. The next hole goes into the one inch hole I just drilled and I try to hit it dead center with the three quarter inch bit. That will all make sense shortly. On the front jaw, I drill two holes at each location that are offset one quarter inch from dead center. On my vise, I want the front jaw to be adjustable so that it can handle clamping tapered pieces of wood as well. The offset holes essentially create one oval hole, allowing for that option to clamp variable sized pieces of material. If my interest were in clamping uniform pieces by keeping the jaws always parallel to each other, then I would just simply drill the three quarter inch hole dead center on my marks on the front jaw. There are a lot of ways to approach the Moxon vise to accomplish a variety of different purposes. The next step in the process is to do some chisel work. Since two nuts are recessed into the one inch holes we just drilled, I marked the outline of the nut centered over the hole and used a utility knife blade to mark my lines and give me an edge to work against with the chisel. Using chisels for detail work is something I don't do that often and as a result, I don't sharpen my chisels that often either. I'm amazed at how sharp some of the woodworkers I see can get their chisels and the ease with which they trim up detail work like this. It's something that takes some practice and effort to get that good at using chisels. And I'm always impressed when I watch those kinds of skilled people do that kind of work so well. I'm thinking that once I get accustomed to using the Moxon vise and commit more time to my finer cabinetry interests, Maybe I'll gain some proficiency to do detail stuff like this much more effectively than I do currently. On the double holes for the front jaw that I drilled a quarter inch left and right of my dead center mark, or a half inch on center away from each other, I also needed to use a chisel to cut away that excess material in the center to allow the bolts to freely slide back and forth across the width of the hole. One of the reasons I probably haven't used chisels as much as I could have over the years is the existence of my Dremel tool, which is also an effective way to remove material quickly. My Dremel skills are a little better than my chisel skills. Before I go any further, I'm going to quickly check the work I've done so far by test fitting the bolts, sliding on the front jaw and spinning the handles on the bolts to make sure that everything is looking good. I spin a nut on each of the bolts and slip it through the front side of the rear jaw. Ultimately, I will expose enough thread on the back side of the rear jaw to tighten the nut and washer against the back. The inset nut on the other side gives us the backup we need to tighten the rod solidly in place. Now I'm down to a few design details that make the Moxon work. One is to cut a bevel on the front edge of the front jaw for the purpose of getting rid of that square corner. That way it makes it easier to work on detail pieces without having to deal with that square edge getting in the way. The other goes back to the reason there's a three inch overhang difference between the front jaw and the rear jaw. 
That involves how the vise is clamped in place for use. The simplest way and the way I will use it is to cut off the top half of each 3 inch extension of the rear jaw leaving an exposed tab below the working area of the vise to be able to clamp each end in place when it's in use. Again in my case where my shop carts are more used for multiple purposes I will pull the vise off and store it in one of the drawers in my cart when it's not needed. So that's the simplest approach. If the intention is to permanently bolt the vise in place, other configurations can be used to give it a more decorative look. The simple square cuts are fine for me with a clamp placed on each end for the vise to be held in place while it's in use. I think this is still going to be fine, but I didn't really think through this edge situation very well. Since my countertop is 3 quarter inch melamine with a hardwood edge attached to it, and this is the location where I need to clamp my vise to use it, the vise has a little bit of flex when attached to the edge. I'm not concerned about the edge breaking loose from the countertop or anything like that, but the movement that will happen just because of the design is something I'll have to be aware of. I keep a 45 degree chamfer bit always installed in my trimmer router just for projects like this. All it's doing is knocking off about a sixteenth of an inch of the edges of the front and back jaws just to get rid of the sharpness. And then I'm giving it a quick sanding with 100 grit sandpaper to give the overall vise a consistent look and some smoothness. I use polycrylic a lot for my higher end construction projects as well as something simple like this. I actually should throw a coat of it on the edges of my shop carts as well now that I think about it. It's not like an oil so it doesn't soak in, but it's a surface coating that is durable for any finish and it dries really quickly since it's water-based. After the first coat dries, I lightly sand it and then hit it with a second coat and call it good. Poplar is a nice looking wood with a clear finish on it. I like it because it's a relatively inexpensive hardwood and is really stable. It's also great for painting. The vise is ready for final assembly and to be put to use. Incidentally, I did not put finish on the inside faces of the jaws that do the actual clamping. I think that the clamping pressure that's applied by the hand screws through the vise is so significant that the finish probably wouldn't make much difference for my uses, but it makes sense to leave the wood unfinished and go from there. The hardware for building this is very simple and straightforward. If you have specific needs for a different shape of clamp or other application, you can see how easy it is to configure your cuts of wood in such a way to meet whatever needs you have and then install the nuts and bolts accordingly. Overall, a good little project and I'm happy with the results. By the way, if you have questions about this or any other video of mine, you can not only comment below but also ask questions directly of me through the link in the description below. Click the link and you'll be taken to an app that will connect you to a workspace where I and other viewers share ideas about projects we're working on. So if you're interested, we'd be happy to have you join that group. Check out other videos here and come back to our channel often to see what else we have going on around Dobbs Workshop. Thanks for watching.